Uh, my name is Fumilade Akilavi. I'm a PhD student from the University of Johannesburg and under the supervision of Professor Osikoski. And the title of my talk is on food anatomy of uh, Cape Erica. And we are presenting our preliminary results. Uh, these are my presentation outline. Uh, introduction. I wish me not to introduce Erica to the house again because I'm among the authority on Erica. Uh, as we know about geographical distribution of Erica, Africa has the largest number of a uh, diversity of Erica and Cape Floristic region being the home of the uh, diverse species of Erica. And uh, Erica being the largest species, uh, having the largest share from the Western Cape, it's uh, attention, uh, it did not receive more attention anatomically. The only anatomic, uh, anatomic information that we have is on European and Mediterranean species. Mm -hmm. So African species, African diversity up to now does not have any record on anatomical data, which is why we embark on this mm -hmm. research work. Uh, objective of this study. Objective of this study is to describe the wood structure of South African species of Erica. And two, to clarify the relationship between wood, the wood diversity, phylogenetic pattern, and climatic condition of these species. Also, to clarify the relationship between the wood structure and fire survival strategies among the species of Erica. Our materials and methods, a total of 33 wood samples, uh, wood specimens were examined and they were collected from Western Cape province, different locations and from Dragas Bend. And the wood anatomy terminology was performed according to recommendation of IWAWE. Masturation were made using Jeffrey solution to measure the viral length and basic elements. Uh, this, uh, our sample preparation, uh, for the plane of wood sectioning, we need to collect the wood from all the all parts of the wood. So uh, the red arrow is showing the radial space. This is transverse space and the uh, tangential surface. So we collect sample from all the surfaces. And this is where we are doing, we sectioning the wood using rotary microtone. microtone. And the samples, uh, the sectioning were then stained with safranin and Asian blue and it was washed with different degree of alcohol prior to being mounted. And these are mounted light and other ob uh, observations were made under the microscope, the light electron microscope. Also, we did the same for the scanning electron microscope. The sample were taken from, uh, from radial surface and the tangential surface, and they were uh, mounted on the stored and it's cold plated and was kept in the investigator prior to being observed under the uh, scanning electron microscope. And uh, these are our results. Uh, we section the result parts into the group, the structure of wood, and under the wood structure, according to IEW, there are terminology that, they have, that have been laid down terminology that we use to, to define the structure of wood. From the, the slide here showing, the first picture here is showing the growth ring in the, in the wood structure. And this one, the first one is showing distance to in this or absent, in this or absent growth ring, as you can see. While the second slide and the third slide, they both show uh, distance growth ring, but uh, the distance are being marked with different number of platinum radial fiber. As you can see here, we have up to two, two to three, uh, radiant flattin fiber that is uh, that mark the differentiation of late and early wood. Same here, we have up to five flattin radial fiber that uh, differentiates between the late and the early woods. Here we are talking about fresh uh, the vessel grouping here, and the picture uh, the picture one is showing us exclusive solitary vessel that this the vessel are standing all alone. Why in picture two and three, you can see a couple or group of relative uh, common group vessels like this here. We see couple, we can see a four pairs here, four, four pairs and four pairs. So this shows that 
how the group were arranged together, they were group. And uh, like we have solitary here and we have group a uh, fesut group A. Here is the race. Uh, the first picture is showing us the narrow, narrow rails. And we can see the unicellular rate, that is the number of cells inside the rail. We see the unicellular rate, and this is by series, two rays in the in the rail cell. Why the picture two and three show us the broad multicellular rate? We have so many number of cells inside the rails, and they are broad as well. Here we are describing the Asian parenchyma as as they appear in the structures of the, the structure of the wood. The first picture shows us the uh, the diffuse in aggregate of the Asian parenchyma cell. Why picture two shows us the scanty parasitical type of Asian parenchyma? They were attached to the vessel, but they were in scanty paratrachia to the why the third picture shows us a very sparse that is scarce. They were scarce because you can count the number of Asian parenchyma in this uh, particular uh, microgram. And this are same picture. The same picture is for us to have more details of a particular uh, character in the wood. Um, especially we all look, we all uh, we all uh, usually use them to look if it. Uh, the type of perforation plate, helical thickening, and interface piece. But particularly this helical uh, species, uh, we do not find helical thickening in helical species. And these are the, we can see picture one shows us the simple perforation plates, and picture two shows us particular perforation plates. And this is the first time we recorded the first uh, recording a reticulate perforation plate in uh, Erica. Uh, the, uh, the previous first information that we have on this uh, species of Erica and European, uh, they have simple perforation plates. Also, picture two and three shows different and diverse way of uh, interversal pitch from the root structure of Erica. Yeah. This, here we are showing the difference between the sample from Western Cape and the one from Drag Expert. We were able to observe some, uh, some uh, differences in the sample that we were collected from Western Cape and the one we collected from uh, Western Cape and the one we collected from Drag Expert. So we have limited sample from Drag Expert, we just have three samples. Why we have 30 samples from Western Cape. Uh, and um, uh, the character that we see that are distinct among them are the percentage of solitary vessel, the smaller mm -hmm. intervessel pits, and wider ray cells. And the picture here is showing us the okay, uh, occasional occurrence of group vessels. As I've discussed in the previous slide earlier, too, we have group vessels here. And these are samples from and we can see the sample from the other picture shows the sample from uh, Cape, which are exclusive solitary. That is, the vessels are standing all alone. And, and this is now from our data of the, uh, of the samples that we collected, we try to plot a graph, which show us degree of, uh, we can see that there's a, uh, uh, certainly the differences between them. And the character were also mapped on the phylogenetic tree. And we can see that uh, the differences between the, uh, the solitary, uh, the tracker's bank and the cave. Also, the interversal pit also show us from uh, I, the same photo, the scanning electron microscope show us the detail that happened in the structure of wood. And these are the interversal peaks. We can see this Erica Simi from Dagestan, white Erica Pespia is from uh, Western Cape. We can see the differences, seeing the, um, uh, the picture of the, uh, seeing their picture. Even the quantitative value that we counted also show us that they are quite different. So this is the quantitative 
value is what we map out on the graph, which was, and the character will map out as well on the, on the value genetic tree, which show us the differences between them. Also, why the, the width of rails? We can see we have narrow rails in Cape uh, species. Why um, the sample collected for drug special was a wide width of rails. As we can see, the arrow showing us the wide width of rail from the sample from drug special. Same thing we are done to them too. We can see they have higher number of wider rail compared to the sample from Cape. So this now brought us to, to say that though we have seen that there are distance between Western Cape, that is drug expert, they are distant from the Western Cape sample. And the differences now, it, they are prominent, but we cannot authoritatively say they are statistically significant due to the limited sample sampling from drug expert. We have just three samples. And these differences, we are, we, are, we are trying to attribute it to the phylogenic position of the species from the uh, drug expert because it belongs to a sister lineage of cave species. As we can see it from the previous uh, uh, phylogenic tree, we map them on. And also, with, uh, we, we are thinking maybe the differences may be because of the climatic uh, differences between the two regions, the Western Cape fall within the Mediterranean climate with winter rainfall, while the dragon's bear fell within temperate region with dry winter. And as part of the work, the uh, report from uh, Michael Kerry and Eto, which are talking about radiation, we think maybe it may be part of why there's differences or, uh, between them, because the Western, uh, the species from Western Cape they don't have to struggle for uh, moisture and water. They have access, unlike uh, the species from the dry winter in drag spring from under the climate, the temperate climate. So we cannot distinguish between the effects due to close association between the phylogenetic pattern and distribution ranges in the genus Erica. Also, we try to uh, look into the differences between the fire strategy, the contrast that was to know between the cedars, mints, and the sprata. So we try to classify our samples and we try to map out what happened. And we can see the differences. There was a great uh, uh, significant difference between the cedar and the sprata. We can see the, the, the cedar and the mints doesn't have much or differences and it's the great differences observed between the cedar and the respirator. And from the picture, we can see that the cedar have the narrow way while the respirator have the broad rails. So we can infer that uh, from the report, the sort of uh, Bell and Ojeda, it, it tried to, uh, on their work on root wood of Eureka, they said that large rate in root are responsible for storage required for their dispersing. So from our work, we are trying to infer that maybe it's because of the uh, storage uh, responsibility of the rails, that's why it make, uh, make them to have that wider rails that will be observed within them. Also, Steno, uh, Sten, uh, Stepnova et al. have similar results in their stem wood of protesting. They say, why did they stem also? Why if the bulb, uh, if the bulb first them are killed by fire? So that means the underground uh, rails, the roots, the, uh, the rail from the root on the ground that have stored the starch, we help them to sprout. So we come up with, with the hypothesis that the weight of rails is associated with the ability to produce adventurous bird, which is required for them to Sprout. Our conclusion uh, the studies Erica species share mostly to exclusive solitary vessel, simple perforation plates, alternate minute intervasive fields, diffuse to diffuse in aggregates, Asia, Parenchyma. And then we see the occasionally very sparse 
or scars one that doesn't have much facial parietama in them. And, and this suit of traits was reported also from the six species of European and Mediterranean region. And also we made the first record of particular perforation plate in Erika. And the sample species from Erika and uh, from Tragesper have they have lower percentage of solitary vessel, wider red width, and smaller intervessive pit than most of the species from Cape Lipchum. These differences can be related to their phylogenetic position, also to the climate, but cannot be distinguished because this is because the effect is due to close association between the phylogenetic pattern and distribution ranges in the genus Erica. And also the respirator have wider rate than the cedar, and supposedly due to the ability of produce uh, of the uh, ab their ability to produce adventurous bird that they will be required for sprouting. Uh, further research, we will good anatomical examination of more representative of the Erica species from different regions. We thought that at least because we have larger number of Erica, at least almost 700 species, and what we are reporting is just on that 40 now, 33 species samples. So we have much larger uh, representative. So maybe it will help us to clarify the effect of final genetic position, climate, and as well as other factors of the wood structure. And also the morphological anatomic, uh, morphological and anatomic, anatomical study of post fire sprouting erica species with emphasis on the occurrence, abundance, and localization of adventist bones. That is, this to help us to test the hypothesis about their relationship between the race size system and their ability to produce adventist bone as the condition for to describe it. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, maybe you can unshare your screen, or I don't know, maybe I can I can do that from here. Um, perfect, wonderful. Does um, do we have any any questions for Fernando? Of course, of course. Please go ahead. Sorry. Um, thank you for the for the for the talk for the interesting talk. Um, I have just a quick question. I mean, uh, seeing that you have studied the 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 xylem rays, I mean, on the on, on the stems. I was wondering. I don't know many Erica's from the Drakensberg, but I saw Erica Drakensbergensis, and I saw. I noticed that it has a very thick bark, just like our cold coke tree. So I was wondering whether, I mean, that species that lives in the in the Drakensberg savanna, when it burns, the I would think that the 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 branches don't get burned off. So they they have a epicormic resprouting. So and then I would I would um, I would think that they they have wider rays is because of, of epicormic resprouting. I don't know anything about the other dragon species. So could, could be my, my, my question uh, have you considered epicormic resprouting? Oh, uh, so, uh, pull me. Uh, I think uh, I must uh, uh, reply because I collected this plant. And uh, I, I think, uh, so, but uh, it's uh, uh, maybe this, the, uh, the broad race, this is the site of formation of buds for epicorming uh, resprouting. Uh, but uh, no, so this is uh, the anatomical. Uh, but uh, so when I collected, uh, I collected quite small uh, sample. I I'm not very familiar with the species of Erica, and uh, uh, so for me, it's a more detailed observation could be important. But I I also saw that uh, the um, Erica species they quite. Uh, diverse in uh, bark anatomy. 
in distribution and amount of uh, fibers in bark. The, uh, we, uh, we, we saw some portions of bark on anatomical sections, and it could be very interesting subject of special uh, study, the bark anatomy of uh, uh, Cape Ericus. But we, we, we didn't check it yet. It may be for the future also. Yeah. Could be. Thank you. Thank you. Jan, please go ahead. <laughs> for me, it's just a suggestion. <laughs> Um, that you should look at uh, some of the very widespread species. I think Erica serenthoides would be a perfect example that grows both in the Western Cape, even in dry areas in the Cedarburg, and then all the way up to the Waterberg in the north, so that you can compare the wood from the different areas within the same species, so that we can see whether this is genetic or it's just edaphic. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Yeah, I would I would add to that actually. This, this Serenthoides jumped out of the of the analysis in being one of the kind of strange ones, but also one of two species that you you looked at which have a widespread distribution between Drakensberg and Cape. The other one being Erica Caffra, which is also odd in its own way, being uh, both widespread uh, Cape clade species, but but they're limited to kind of waterways and you know not not in the same habitat as many species. Um, I think I, I would, looking at the, the wide variation you saw within the Drakensberg species that you sampled, as opposed to a rather narrower variation in the Cape species, I may be, may be considering the special nature of those two species might, be, might, might allow you to draw greater conclusions, as well as you suggested increasing the number of Drakensberg species. But, but I, I'd add to that, that it is wonderful that you're doing this work and documenting this information for all, all of these species. And it, it is, this is a great piece of work. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, by the way, Funmi, please switch on the camera. Uh, uh, we don't see your face. Uh, so, but, uh, so I think it's, it's a very interesting idea. This is our, our first, just, uh, first attempt to study the uh, uh, wood anatomy. And we can see some, uh, so this, uh, this is interesting idea for, for the research. Yes, thank you. We have a, a question from, uh, uh, from uh, Jaime. Uh, have you looked at intraspecific variation for those traits? I guess that applies generally across your, your sampling. Uh, you mean the specific interest to the uh, uh, intra-specific variation? Uh, honestly saying, uh, I have some doubts that wood shows intraspecific variation. It is uh, usually the wood is quite homogeneous uh, within the genera. But uh, if we found some differences between species, it is interesting, but, but, uh, there, uh, in any case, we have uh, we need uh, if we have uh, uh, the species with broad distribution, we can check it uh, because exceptions can be. Uh, mm -hmm. And and we, uh, I'm not very familiar with uh, ta taxonomy of Ericus. That's why your suggestions are very important for us. Thank you.